Alright, hello everyone. We are going to take a look at complex circuits. This is some review from chapter 23. In case it hasn't been clear to you before, what we mean when we say a complex circuit is we just mean that we have some stuff that's in series, but we also have some stuff that's in parallel. Eventually, we're going to take a look at this circuit that's over on the left, but I just want to make sure everybody is good with a few things. If I have a circuit with three resistors, for example, in fact, let's make it four, just for giggles. So I have a battery sitting there, and then I have these resistors, and I have two, four, six, eight ohms. So that's the resistance of each of these things. And I want to know what the combined total resistance of this entire section is. Then I know, well, they're in series because current has to always all pass through each of these resistors. There's only one path. This stuff is always about choice for the electrons. If the electrons have no choice, they must all go through one location, then we can say things are in series. If this is the case, then we can use this really straightforward equation, and I can go 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, that's 20. So I would have a equivalent resistance, so an RT, I might say, of 20 ohms. If I have a different circuit, this time I'm going to put things that are in parallel. Let's go 4 ohms, 4 ohms, and 8 ohms. When I have something that looks like this, my electrons have choice. So as they start to move through and come by, the first option that they see is that they can either go down this way or they can go down this way. The second option is that they can go down this middle path or they can keep going and they can go all the way around. There are actually three different options. Current will always take the path of least resistance, which means that this 8 ohm is going to have the most resistance out of any of those paths. So it's going to have the least amount that will travel through there. Some will go through there, but the least amount will go. The 4 and the 4 relative to each other are identical. They should have the same amount of current passing through them. Remember that we can look at the total resistance here. I just have to plug it into a slightly more complicated equation. I have 1 over RT is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8. This is going to be 2 eighths plus 2 eighths, so I have 5 eighths. Sitting over here is 1 over RT. I can take the inverse of both sides of that, and I find that RT is equal to 8 over 5, or 1.6. All of this stuff here is equivalent to a total resistance of 1.6 ohms. So I could do a pretty quick calculation then going up to Ohm's Law, which hopefully you recognize as being that. Let's now move, though, to our more interesting circuit, our complex circuit, and see that it really doesn't have to be any more complicated. It just has a few more steps involved. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to give us a voltage. So let's say that there's a 14-volt power supply sitting there. And let's look at what we have. I can see that these two guys, those are in series. Why? Because there's no choice. Any current that comes around this path that goes through this one also is going to have to go through this one here. So they really have no choice. That means that those two are in series. Well, how about this? I can have some that goes down this way or some that goes down this way. That is a choice. That means that those two paths are in parallel. And then they're going to meet back up. And hopefully you see that once they meet back up, then all of a sudden we have another situation where everything is passing through the same wire. The way to break problems down like this is to just split it up into multiple steps. I can draw what we call an equivalent circuit that looks like this. I still have my battery. I still have my 5 ohm. I still have my 4 ohm. I'm going to leave out the ohms on all these just to make it easier. And then I can add this together because those are in series, so I can just straight add them together. I can see that I would have a 4 and a 4. So this is what we would call an equivalent circuit. 
when I look at this part here, I can see that I have one choice. Half wants to go down this way, half wants to go down this way. Those look like parallel elements to me. So I can draw yet another equivalent that has a 5 here, just like I had here, and then it's going to go to a 2. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is equal to 1 half, but that is 1 over RT, so RT is equal to 2. I could say that this is also an equivalent circuit. Now when you look at this, you should see that this equivalent circuit, these two things, the 2 and the 5, they are now in series. And so I can reduce this all the way down to what would it look like if I just had one element in there. And I would see that this is 7 ohms because I just did 2 plus my 5 there. Given that I had 14 volts on my power source, Let's see what the current's going to be. I could use Ohm's law, and I could say that 14 volts is going to be equal to I multiplied by R. My total resistance is 7 ohms. And what I find is that my total current is going to be 2 amps. So let me clean this up a little bit. It's going to keep getting kind of messy. But what I can say is that I have 2 amps that travel through. So this is 2 amps that travel through there. All of the electrons, all of the current, must travel through, say, this spot, that spot, that spot. Remember, though, when we get here, they're going to have a choice. So it's not true for me to say that I have two amps traveling through here or through there. I don't quite yet know that. But when they recombine over here, all of it must come back. It's kind of like water flowing through a pipe. I can't lose any of the water in the process. So even on this side, I can say that there's two amps. If you recall, we had one of our circuits combined these two together to get four ohms. And I can see that I have four ohms there and four ohms there. Through a logic argument, I could say, well, I think half is going to go through the top one and half is going to go through the bottom one. And that would be correct, but sometimes you don't have the ability to make such a quick leap if the numbers aren't as nice as the ones that I picked here. Let's go ahead and look at how we would approach that otherwise. It's fine that I have 14 volts across the battery or the power supply, but I kind of want to know what I have here between, let's call that A, B, and C. These different locations are locations where I could have different voltages. Let's compare A and B first. A and B. What do I know? I know that I have a resistance of 5 ohms and that there is a total of 2 amps that have to pass through. All of the 2 amps have to pass through that. So I'm going to say I have an unknown voltage between A and B. Then I have a current of 2 amps and I also have 5 ohms of resistance. So even though my battery is supplying 14 volts of potential difference between the two different locations of the battery, across that one resistor over there, the 5 ohm resistor, I have 10 volts. That is very interesting to me. So how much do I have to have between B and C? My total voltage needs to add up to 14 between A, B, and C. And hopefully you see that whatever the potential is at C has got to be the same potential over here at this dot. So these two guys have to be the same because there are no resistors in between them. That means that the voltage between C and B plus the voltage between B and A, those must add up to the total voltage of the system. So that means that my total voltage of the system was 14 volts minus the voltage that I know I have between A and B, which was 10 volts. That means that I can say the voltage between B and C is going to be 4 volts. Okay, I've added some more information now over here onto the actual diagram. You can see that I have 4 volts between the two locations here 
and here, and I have 10 volts across that one resistor. So if these were not nice, clean numbers on the resistance of these different things here, these different elements, the approach that I would take is I would say, between this location and this location, I have 4 volts. Let's use Ohm's law. And so I have 4 volts is equal to some amount of current. So I'm doing this path right here right now. Some amount of current times the 4 ohms of resistance, 4 divided by 4, I is equal to 1 amp. Recall that we said that we could jump to that based on the simple numbers that I had put together. But so now of these two amps, one amp is going to go down this path. The amperage needs to add to equal the total from before, so that means that I must have one amp going down there. This is almost entirely characterized now. I hope you recognize what I'm doing is I'm just individually applying Ohm's law to small elements of this uh, entire circuit. Now I have one amp that's traveling down this bottom branch here. And I want to know maybe what is the voltage between those two green dots that I just put on there. All one amp that's going down that branch has to pass through both of these resistors. So again, let's just apply Ohm's law. The voltage that I want to know between green dot and green dot is going to be equal to I, the one amp that's going down that branch, times two ohms of a drop between here and here. So I do that and I find that my voltage is 2 volts. Once I get that far, there's really nothing about this particular circuit that I don't know. And it is very true that, again, I'll say I'm using pretty simple numbers just to keep the math easier. But you can apply this same concept to any circuit that is just built out of voltmeter power source and a bunch of resistors. Even if it's a very complex circuit, you can always find little elements that are either in series or parallel with each other and just start a chain of breaking it down piece by piece. Hopefully that makes sense for you and if you think you got it all figured out, let your computer know.